What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest, where we go through the latest Detroit Lions news, even though today's news is actually yesterday's news, but it is some big news. So let's get it started. Fire it up. It's made a great decision. Great teammates, coaches, and other people who want to be Super Bowl champions. And we are. We're going to do it this year. And we're going places because we want to go places. Touchdown, Detroit Lions! Before long, where are they going to be the last one standing? Welcome, everybody, to a video. Glad you guys are here. We are back with another Lions video. And unfortunately, we have another retirement video today for the Detroit Lions. And we're going to talk about that in a second. This was yesterday's news. However, I wasn't actually home for most of yesterday. I was in Michigan. And shout out to Lions Nation Unite. We met up there. You saw the pictures maybe on Twitter. I'll put them on the screen. Me, Micro Mike, Everything King. Of course, H-Man Chrissy. So shout out to all of them, you know, for having us up there. We did some content. We made some videos. So I don't know when they're going to come out, but I'm sure they'll be fire when they do because they do a great job with that, all of those guys. As soon as I arrived, seriously, as soon as I arrived, I checked my text message. Actually, the person that sent this to me that I saw first was from Michael Banks. I checked my text messages. I clicked the link. And I'm like, oh, snap, this is not real, right? Like, it really hurt to see this kind of news. You guys saw the title. You may have seen the news by now. But it is that Detroit Lions defensive lineman, John Penasini. Yes, John Penasini, the legend himself, has retired from the game of football. The second retiring within, like, a couple of weeks. We also had Jermaine Waller, the undrafted free agent out of Virginia Tech, retire. Dan Campbell said he wanted to give him a little bit of time before he made that decision. And then, of course, last year we had Josh Hill, the tight end signing out of New Orleans, retire before we even got to see him on the field. But John Penasini has announced his retirement from the NFL. This one definitely hurt. We have seen John Penasini play now for two seasons. We saw him a lot more in 2020, his rookie year, a sixth-round pick, pick number 197 out of Utah by the last regime. He was definitely a schematic fit, one of the rotational nose tackles for us and he was part of the replacement of a guy like Damon Harrison who if you guys remember we traded for Damon Harrison he came in made a huge pay impact on the defense that snacks Harrison then he struggled the next season Detroit Lions cut ties after the year and they brought in the guys of like Danny Shelton Nick Williams who is no longer on the team either and of course in the sixth round they drafted John Penasini out of Utah that same draft they also took Jay Sean Cornell who looks like we're going to see some this year he's been making an impact his name has been getting out there so far through offseason and workouts, but John Penasini came in. He was a little bit of a rotational player that his role expanded throughout the season. Actually, he finished the season like this, playing this many snaps, okay, by percentage. 65%, 77%, 61%, 52%, 71%, 73%, and 73% of the snaps. That's how we finished this 2020 season. Now, in 2021, his snap counts definitely got pulled back as he only played one game in 2021 where he took over 50% of the defensive snaps. So his role was pulled back. It was a little bit diminished last season. He was also recovering from an injury, which we're going to talk about in a second. Going forward, he may not be the ideal fit as he was drafted for the last regime. You look at guys like Nick Williams who were not brought back, who played about half the snaps defensively. Of course, Trey Flowers, who the Detroit Lions decided to cut, which was a big financial reason as well. But going forward with our new defense schematically, you take a look at the strengths, the weaknesses, what you need out of those players, the explosiveness, the first step, the quicks, things like that you need out of those guys. Of course, John Penasini wasn't necessarily drafted for that. But one thing that we know about Penasini is that he has shown the willingness to adapt, the willingness to adjust to what he is schematically but at the same time he's just a grinder and we saw that in 2020 when he played through an injury which has been talked about a lot with this retirement because we don't know exactly why he retired the statement that he gave he posted on instagram of his retirement then he put like some anime picture afterwards i don't watch anime or whatever that is so i don't know what it, it really means maybe you'll know by the picture what this is you're like oh yeah okay i remember that episode i was uh yeah i know what he's saying right here okay that's emotional i don't know it just looks like a person that's sad. This is what John Penasini put on Instagram. He said this with the post. I have made the decision to retire from football. I'm definitely going to miss my teammates and the coaching staff, but I'm glad I got to experience it. I'm happy and excited for whatever life has for me, for my friends, family, teammates, coaches, and all the people who supported my dream along the way. I appreciate and love you guys 
go Lions. They have a lot of posts on his Instagram. You know, you quickly you were back to 2020 and he's like, oh, rookie posts and he's holding Dairy Queen. It's like, oh, snap, what kind of flavor is that? You know, I'm saying, that, that's what I'm thinking. Immediately, I'm like, oh, snap, they got cookies and cream. What is that? I think a lot of people believe it may have something to do with his health because of the surgery that he had coming into this past season, coming into 2021, off of 2020. The guy had surgery, as Dan Campbell put it like this. I know we've been pleased. Again, this was heading into his first season with the new regime. So this was heading into the 2021 season, not this offseason, last offseason. Dan Campbell said this about John Penasini. I know that we've been pleased with Penasini when he came back into camp. His weight, where he is in shape, passing the conditioning test. Penasini had what looked like softballs in his shoulder that he had repaired after the season, after the fact. This looked like a bunch of calcium deposits that had been in there. You wonder why, when you watch his film last year, why he's not using his arm. It's because he had issues. It's a credit to him playing through it and all of those things. He's better, and you could see it yesterday. It was impressive. I'm pleased with Penasini. The guy was only inactive for one game through two seasons. That came in 2021. But yes, he played through it. He played through that injury. And it's not something that I really noticed before because I didn't really go back and look. I pulled up Tampa Bay from last season. You know, he's playing like 70% of the D. Again, he's playing a lot. And the crazy thing is this, with this, you know, shoulder issue that he's dealing with, it was on his right shoulder from what I could tell. With this shoulder issue, that he's dealing with he's actually playing more snaps as the season goes on with the Lions of 2020 it's crazy it's a big time testament to him and trying to play through those injuries but as John Penasini said it was definitely something that he was dealing with as in the second part of 2020 his rookie season he stopped doing upper body workouts he couldn't do upper body workouts and according to Dan Campbell like he said the guy he wasn't even utilizing his arm John Penasini said coming into the 2021 season, I'm locked in. It's better that it improved, but it was definitely something that was noticeable. As I pull up the Tampa Bay game, he's literally not moving his arm. He's not utilizing. He's kind of just holding it down. Testament to him playing through that injury and fighting through that. But at the same time, you would also understand if this had something to play into with his decision to retire and his health. And I can't even move my arms. You don't want to retire and live the rest of your life where it's like, I can't move my arms up, you know, things like that. And I don't know exactly what it was like. He said he was better, but it could be something like that. It could be, you know, part of that tied in with the fact that, you know, maybe he doesn't have that love for it to, you know, put in that time to take that punishment, whatever it may be. We don't know the exact thing. All we know is that he has retired from the NFL. And all I know is when I saw the news, it definitely was like, a, oh, dang. I was a huge fan of John Penasini. I remember we picked him. It was one of our earlier draft, you know, breakdown videos. Definitely different than what we do now, but I gave it an A+. Plus. I was like, I love the pick. I love the value. It was necessary. I was so happy we got Penasini. Cini. And man, I, I loved this player. I mean, I know he played a lot less last season, showed us a lot more as a pass rusher than anybody anticipated when he was drafted. We knew what he was as a run stuffer. So a little bit on the shorter side, what he saw it helped him in terms of leverage, which I think did too, but also 320 pounds. You know, he's just a rotational, maybe eventual, you know, the future interior nose tackle for that regime. But of course that regime was, you know, gone after that season. So it's a new defense. His role is pulled back. Now on the field, the question of course is, well, what does this mean for the Lions? Do they have a major hole? now to fill here as we said his role was diminished last year we know Ali McNeil is going to be that guy for the Lions you could label it as a nose tackle d tackle whatever you want to say point is just where is he on the field Ali McNeil is going to show a lot of versatility the Lions already said they feel like he's more versatile than they thought when they drafted him so expect him to move around the defensive line but you know most of the time his role is going to be a guy that could play one tech and shade to center you know can bump out kick out a little bit further than that but he's your interior you know run stuffer in there but at the same time with his strengths and quickness his ability to get off the line he could be much more effective in the backfield as we know the scheme is starting to shift to with that being said who's behind him now at that role when you go down the depth chart that we currently have there isn't a guy out there that sticks out it's like oh yeah he's 320 he's kind of the backup to a lame that kind of thing there isn't that guy aside from maybe michael brockers now brockers is a little bit on the taller side for playing the interior, but for the role that I think he's going to play, it will benefit him along with the Levi's, the Aleems, to be in more of an aggressive style defensive line, more getting downhill. His ability to win off the line, he has a fantastic first step. Uh, he does have the size. We saw last year at times that he would shade a center on early downs, not just sub packages. So I think Brockers gives you that flexibility of a guy that could bump inside and help you there if you need him to and not be a liability, which is, of course, huge. We know we have guys that are 
able to move around. Levi got some reps there. Was not ideal last season, but again, playing more of an aggressive style, more downhill, it could help him transition a little bit more to give you a little bit more from that spot, even though it's not his main spot. Hector is just under 300 pounds. You look at a guy like Demetrius Taylor, who's about 290, but at the same time, he is a little bit on the shorter side, but like a DN in college, maybe he could kick inside if he makes the roster. I definitely think there's versatility and there's guys that compete to push for that. There just isn't that guy that stands out. Rockers. And of course, no more Nick Williams, who also got some reps at that role last year as well. I guess in a way, you're kind of moving on from a lot of the guys that were in your front seven more of your defensive line in that scheme to Nick Williams to Trey Flowers now the John Penasini's in a different skill set but with that being said this isn't necessarily the way that you want to see that happen and I was a big fan of Penasini and I think even though he wasn't drafted for this scheme you know look at the Sean Hands whatever he still a lot of us believed would make the team did have thoughts like oh, I wonder if maybe he'd be one of the guys that are flexible but you're just like yeah you know you need that depth with that being said the Lions could look to address it grab another nose tackle for competition we know we got Kaminsky who is definitely not that size he's more like the 270 ballpark even though he can move up a little bit but with how we're going to style this defense I think there is more flexibility with the Josh Pascals look we have the guys that can get pressure in sub packages it's more about the early down rotational nose tackle and I think right now the most glaring guy for that is probably Michael Brockers Another guy to keep an eye on, of course, is Jay Sean Cornell, who has been popping a lot so far from all the notes we've been getting from the offseason workouts. We'll see where the Lions look to utilize him. I think he's better suited for a 4-3 DT than a 4-3 D end. With that being said, again, you have to keep in mind the context. What does that mean? What role does that mean? I like him as a sub down, push to pocket type player. We even saw that in small glimpses because he only played a handful of snaps last year. But he always has that ability, and I think we're hearing of it now. And he's getting the opportunity to rush the quarterback. He just needs to be on the field. But again, early nose tackle, maybe not ideal, but there is flexibility because of the style we're going to be playing so I think we have the pieces on the roster but the Lions could definitely look to maybe add to this if someone pops up in terms of maybe someone gets cut maybe there's someone free agency right now that the scouts have already you know identified whatever that may be or maybe they just look to see how their guys play out and then decide later whether or not they feel like they need more help but I'm definitely wishing John Penasini the best of luck going forward with whatever, whatever that is I'm sure he'll ball at it but either way you know it's definitely unfortunate to see that John Penasini has retired but we are wishing him the best of luck so good luck John Penasini it stinks to see this he had a 2020 season which statistically he was definitely impactful no question the guy had a sack four tackles for loss 35 tackles last year's stat line of course dipped as well as his playing time did but he'll finish it off with 49 career tackles and a guy that you just knew he would play through anything but again get healthy you know you want to make sure he gets right i'm not going to speculate why he retired but i'm definitely wishing him the best thank you Pat, for watching give your john Penasini best wishes down below and let me know your thoughts and i'm